this has kind of been the last couple of days we've been getting ready for this demo. You can see it's, it's kind of a mess. I, I think <laughs> if your table looks like this, then this is probably a toy you want to play with, right? <laughs> Lots of cigarettes, Red Bulls, McDonald's a couple of times. The life of a hacker. <laughs> So at MIT, I started getting into robotics, and I had the weird fortune of coming into this lab um, where they had this odd philosophy about how robots should move. You know, you're used to robots that move really stiff. You know, C-3PO starting in the 70s, and then you move on even to ASIMO right now. If you've ever seen Honda's ASIMO, it's a $500,000 robot. It can do anything, but when it walks, it walks like really low CG, really big feet, just kind of clunks along flat. And you know, my research advisors said, yeah, that won't do. What can we do to make robots move more agilely, more fluidly, with more you know, grace, really, more like animals? And we turned to machine learning. And it turns out that the same tools in machine learning that uh, are really the solution to making robots move more like animals is the same tools they use to do statistical analysis for things like machine vision, speech to text, text to speech, spam filtering. It's all the same algorithms. And um, you know, we're only now just discovering what the power of uh, this new field of computer science can really do for us. So in studying robotics, one of the worst things that happens is you have to build a robot. You, know, you can only do so much math on the board until it comes time to um, actually make something like this, like a plane. And when you make your prototypes uh, for your algorithms, you end up using a computer, just a regular desktop machine. And so the naive thing to do is to try and put a desktop machine on a robot like this, on a plane. And you can see there's not a whole lot of space for a desktop machine. And, uh, and if you look at the robots that are out there, they kind of reflect that clunkiness, the fact that they had to put a big hunk of electronics, an x86 processor running Linux or Windows, on the robot because they were too lazy to really uh, design their own embedded systems. And so what we wanted to do was make a hardware suite where you didn't have to put a computer on your robot. You just put exactly the electronics that you needed, no more, no less. The dynamics of the plane are relatively simple as long as it's nice and stable and going straight. And it's because the math is easy. But what we want to do is really push the limits of what you can make an autopilot do. The nice thing about these boards is they're computationally powerful enough and we're confident that we can implement some of the neater algorithms that you need in order to be able to do things like autonomous acrobatics. And that's really at the cutting edge of robotics research and computer science research. One of the things that we really want to accomplish with these boards is to make them really usable for people like academics and hobbyists that just want to play with really powerful hardware or explore you know, some algorithm for some embedded system, be it a robot or whatever, um, without having a lot of hardware experience. But we also kind of want to change the way that engineers working for real companies uh, design their hardware. You know, one of the things that people don't like doing is reinventing the wheel, and there's no reason why you should have to spend a week writing an interface so that your chip can talk to some RAM, some memory, when a million other boards have that same exact interface on it. You should just be able to plop it in in a nice, easy-to-use tool chain and prototype it. Uh, you better step back. Yeah. <laughs> we, set it, we set it up here so, because with these wires and stuff on it so we wouldn't, it wouldn't get out of control and cut our eyes out. <laughs> it's pretty good hover. Well, not there. <laughs> Rock on. Cool. Yeah. Ready to go? Yep. All right. Is there any battery left in this thing? 11 volts. Cigarettes. There's some in your room. So we're going across the street to the park. It's a baseball field. Hopefully there's not too, too many little kids around <laughs> to hit. I'm fairly confident that the computer can fly the plane better than, than anyone I know, at least. <laughs> Whoa! Hell yes. I'm not sure you were crashing. You're gonna crash. Oh, Whoa. he knows where he's going. Over the tree. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you don't want to put a thousand dollars worth of electronics on the, on the thing. <laughs> the development uh, software we're making is made to make machine learning easy. The control system that we're programming our board to do on this airplane will be able to stabilize the airplane and make it easier for you to fly. So we have a, a switch back and forth where you can, you, can, you can switch to the computer control 
or you can control it yourself. Yeah, when you have limited resources, you really learn how to put things together. And that's really what makes a good hacker. Wow! <laughs> <laughs>